to me, it's just quick math, yeah? That's all science is to me, and the people, it's what I love about doing these events, I see some familiar faces, people have come back, so I know there's people in here that have seen me break down science in a very simplified way. But I'm curious, because I do see some unfamiliar faces. Who's never been to a Hidden Science Academy event before? Show of hands. Wow. Wow. For those people who have never been to a Hidden Science Academy event before, I've got one thing to say to you. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. So what are you going to learn today? So I'm going to make you out. It was it was humorous as well. So and, and the way the information was broken down was amazing. And I definitely will be coming back to more of the hidden science <laughs> um, events because yeah, I learned so much and I'm just so grateful to to be able to be a part of it and experience it. Very good. Very interesting. Really good. Very inspiring. And I would recommend it to anyone to come. We definitely and we will come back again. Definitely. Well, I thought the event was fantastic. Um, I thought the delivery was fantastic. The presentation, the breaking down of complex ideas so that everybody could feel um, involved and can participate was exceptional. And the interaction with the um, video material was superb. Hidden science, man. Hidden science. Thank you. is not black culture. It is not black culture. And the more we start to study our own history, the more we are truly gain knowledge of self. And when we gain knowledge of self, we'll naturally drop anything that doesn't pertain to self. We'll naturally drop anything that doesn't pertain to self. Like we'll be walking around and just drop it. And people will be like, uh, excuse me, you dropped something. <laughs> what, what did I drop? I think you dropped your culture. My culture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, let me check. Hold on a second. Uh, torture. 
gang violence, war, rape, pedophilia, cannibalism. Nah, this is your culture, right? <laughs> I picked it up by mistake. <laughs> Take it back. Right, welcome family. Welcome, welcome. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to this fascinating presentation entitled The Hidden Science of White Supremacy. We do a white supremacy free lecture. Um, it's a free lecture series. We always do it when we're just about to launch a course. And this one is called The Ten Rules of Racism. So we're going to be going through the 10 rules of racism. Big up the people that are in the chat already large up all the people that are in. Uh, Sister Barbara should be joining us soon and she'll be sharing the Zoom, no, the Vimeo link, because you know people might have issues getting into this one for whatever reason. So we're gonna be sharing the Vimeo link as well. If you guys can share it with your friends and whoever's up, whoever wants to be part of this, we've got a Vimeo link that's live right now, just in case people can't get in. So large up the family, big up everyone that's putting messages in the chat. Let me know where you're tuned in from. So. Big up all the people that are putting messages in the chat. Let me know where you're tuning in from, what part of the world. I know London's in, in the house. Anyone from abroad, Canada in the building, large up Canada, Nottingham, Birmingham in the building, Hertfordshire, Wembley in the building. For those of you who are new to the Hidden Science Academy, I've got my two laptops open. So if you see me turn to the right here, I'm just seeing your, your messages. East London, Leeds in the building. Big up Leeds and Birmingham. We've actually got events coming up for you guys. So big up Romford, Essex, South London, Coventry. Large up the people from the UK. A lot of people from the UK. Yeah, I saw Canada in the building. Leicester, Wellingborough, Luton in the building. So yeah, and Barbados. There we go. So we got some people from overseas as well. So large up all the UK. Massive Croydon in the building. Bear people from South London. We've got people from all over the globe tuning in right now. And I can see the numbers slowly rising. Belgium, big up my sis, Belgium in the building. So it's all good. We've got the, the global family. And we're going to be talking about a global topic tonight. So big up everyone that's tuned in right now. It's a very, it's a very serious subject that we're talking about right now. And that's one of the reasons why we've put it on at a later date, um, a later time. So we usually do our webinars around seven o'clock, but this time we're doing it at nine o'clock because we're going past the what they call the watershed. So um, yeah, it's a serious subject, subject, and we really want to get into it. So um, if there are children, because sometimes um, I've been told that people watch the webinars with their children. If there are children, this is a serious subject. So there might be, you know some serious topics and and maybe even some serious language the odd swear word not from me but just from what i'll be showing yeah so big up my sis leah in the building as well large up and by the way family there is a vimeo link yeah so for big up all the people that are joining us right now i know we're going to get emails saying people can't join and that sort of stuff for whatever reason they can't get in so there will be a vimeo link sister barbara will share that in a in a little while but there's so much to get into family. So I just wanna get into it straight away. So I'm just gonna share my screen and let me know if you guys can see that. You should be able to see that, yeah. All right, let me just move this out of the way. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning, we do these free lectures to promote our courses. So we do have a course as part of the Hidden Science Academy entitled the Hidden Science of White Supremacy, The Truth About Racism. Now it is a pre-recorded course and it's um, run by myself, Leon Marshall. And I actually did it um, at my university, London South Bank University. I recorded it. And at the time we was just gonna do it as a, as a physical 
course. But because of the pandemic, we made it into an online course. So it's pre-recorded. But what you do is you watch the class and then we do like a live Q&A session. So I'm going to give you more information about that at the end of the webinar. I'm also going to give you information about the events that we got coming up, family. We've got an event in Leeds coming up. We've got an event in Birmingham coming up. And if you stay right to the end, family, you guys who stay right to the end, you'll get the discount code so you can get the tickets for half price. Literally nothing, basically. Yeah. So stay right to the end and you will be getting a discount code for the events that we've got coming up. We've got one in Leeds, one in Birmingham coming up. But yeah, so this one we've entitled the rules, the 10 rules of racism. So we're gonna be going through the 10 rules of racism tonight. And as I just mentioned, it is a serious subject. So there will be uh, maybe a little bit of serious language because I'm gonna be showing videos and that sort of stuff. Not so much, but just a disclaimer that, you know, this is a serious subject. So, um, yeah, if there are children watching, you might have to explain to them certain things. Because when it comes on to this subject, unfortunately, because it's quite such a serious subject, um, we do one of two things with our children. We either don't tell them about it at all, or we try and tell them it in, a, in an appeasing way to make it not seem as bad. So disclaimer, if they're watching this, they're, they're gonna learn some stuff, yeah? And with that being said, I need to mention that even if they're not children, you know, even if they're adults, you know, teenagers or even adults, they might feel some cognitive dissonance, yeah? So every time I'm um, doing a, a webinar on this subject, I always mention this um, term, it's called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance, is when you've believed something for a very long time and then you're met with new information that challenges that belief yeah and then there's a bit of mental conflict and then you're you have to decide whether you go with the new information or continue with your belief which the new information has now challenged yeah so it it creates like mental pain basically so cognitive dissonance so this is another disclaimer the information that i'm going to be going through tonight if you're if you're new to the hidden science academy it may cause cognitive dissonance now that's something that i don't want to cause but if you've been a lot of us because of the way the system runs and because of the way we've been educated um, a lot of the stuff that we believe to be true with regards to racism and that sort of stuff when you find out the truth it could cause cognitive dissonance so that's just another um, disclaimer however a lot of the people who are on this webinar they've been to a Hidden Science Academy event before, or they've been, they've tuned into a Hidden Science Academy webinar before. So they understand, they know um, the amount of information and what we'll be dropping, yeah? However, I'm curious because I don't like to make assumptions. Is there anyone in the chat right now who's never been to a Hidden Science Academy event and never been to a hidden science webinar so this is their first time in a hidden science webinar if this is your first time in a hidden science webinar put a one in the chat right now first time in a hidden science webinar put a one in the chat all right people put in ones yes first time ones me too quite a few ones okay ones all right big up I love seeing first timers. Big up all the first timers, yeah? People putting ones in the chat. For all those people who are putting ones in the chat right now, I've got um, one thing to say to you. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. All right. So, what you need to understand first thing you need to learn is that science is based off of observation. So, Anytime I'm teaching science, I teach it in a way that's very simplified, but um, the scientific community, they go with what they call the scientific method, which is they create a theory and then they use that theory to make a prediction. They design an experiment to test the prediction and then they observe the results. This is what they call the, the scientific method. Yeah. And it's based off of observation. So that's the first thing you got to learn that science, all science is based off of observation. So what I'm going to be going through tonight is based off of my own observations, yeah? And because they're my own observations, 
you guys might have observed some other things. So as I'm going through this, I want you guys to interact. Uh, raise your hand and we can make you go live. Um, if you agree or disagree with some of the rules, let me know. Yeah. Because what I've found through my own observation is that many people find science very confusing. And I've found that confusion always leads to conflict. That conflict could be internal and or external. If it's internal, that's like mental conflict. That's like cognitive dissonance. That's mental pain. That could lead to depression, anxiety, fear. And then that's going to lead to some form of mental pain. So confusion always leads to conflict. Conflict leads to pain. The conflict external could lead to disagreements with other people. It could lead to arguments. It could lead to fights, beefs. It could lead to wars. So anytime you're in conflict with yourself or with others, it's going, to, it's going to lead to pain. And pain is not always physical. Pain can be felt physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, or spiritually. So anytime we're studying something new or we want to find some new information, what do we need? Especially in science, we need the truth because I've found through my own observation that the truth leads to clarity and clarity leads to peace. So hopefully throughout this presentation, I'm going to be telling you the truth. Now, now like anything, I like um, for beliefs and that sort of stuff to be challenged. So if I'm going through my rules and you think that a rule is wrong or you think that I've missed something out, by all means, raise your hand or put a question in the chat. There's the Q&A section. You guys can debate it and, and challenge me on my 10 rules. But I feel like these are the 10 rules that they follow. Yeah. So we want the truth. Truth leads to clarity. Clarity leads to peace. So I'm going to be going through the 10 rules of racism. Now, it's funny because they come up with the Ten Commandments. Everyone's familiar with the Ten Commandments that are in the Bible. Yeah, the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I'm not going to read through all of them, but we're all familiar with the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Notice that they don't follow these commandments. Have you noticed that? These are the Ten Commandments, but yet they don't follow these commandments. Hardly anyone follows these commandments, if we're being honest, yeah? So these are the Ten Commandments. They don't follow these. However, the Ten Rules that I have observed, they do follow. So the Ten Rules of Racism that I have observed, they do follow, and they all follow these. So we're going to go through them one by one, yeah? And I'm going to do it like a commandment, since this is how they like to talk, yeah? So I'm going to do it like a commandment. So again... This is going to be very interactive. We can talk about each rule, but I'm going to go through them one by one. The first rule, family, is thou shalt keep black people confused as to what racism is. A lot of us talk about the subject, but we don't know what it is. We have no idea what it truly is. There are black people that believe that black people can be racist. That means you don't understand what racism truly is, yeah? And again, you can challenge me on this. You can raise your hand and we can discuss it. But because I delivered a course and all of my material for the course is based off of this book right here, which is called The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept by Neely Fuller Jr. Now, for those of you who don't know who Neely Fuller Jr. is, he's actually the mentor. He was the mentor for Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, as you all know, or as you all should know, wrote the powerful book, The ISIS Papers. So um, ISIS Papers is one of the best books on racism you could ever read. So this was her mentor. So this is a very powerful book. Yeah. So throughout this book, he breaks down what racism truly is. And this is him here, Neely Fuller Jr. And he's actually still alive today and he's still on radio every week talking about the same subject, which is racism, white supremacy. And he has a famous quote. And his famous quote is, 
If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. Everything else you understand will only confuse you if you do not understand what racism, which he calls white supremacy, is. Yeah. So this is the book for people who ask him what is the book. He's got a very it's got a very long title. It's called the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. I'm sure Amazon might have it, but he does have his own website called ProduceJustice.com. So I'd suggest getting it from his own website, ProduceJustice.com. And it has a subtitle, which is a compensatory counter racist code. He believes that the white supremacists, the racists, they follow a code. So he believes we as black people, we'd, we need a counter code to counter racism. Yeah. And he's the only one that I'm aware of that's written a counter racist code. Yeah. And in that code, Fuller observed that con contrary to most present thinking, there is only one function in racism in the known world which is white supremacy. So he says racism is white supremacy, white supremacy is racism. They're, they're one and the same thing. And what is it? It's a system designed to dominate and mistreat people of color in all nine areas of people activity. Why? For fun, glory, and material gain. Big up Sharon, she says she bought her copy from Amazon, big up. Yeah, so you can get it. You can either get the book from Amazon or you can go to his website. I'd suggest going to his website because then you're patronizing the man himself. Yeah, but that's what that's how he describes what racism is. Dominate and mistreat people of color in all nine areas of people activity for fun, glory and material gain. And he actually changed material gain to material comfort because he says they've gained everything now. So he's changed it to material comfort. But what are the nine areas of people activity? Here they are here. One, economics. Two, education. Three, entertainment. Four, labor. Five, law. Six, politics. Seven, religion. Eight, sex. And nine, war. According to Neely Fuller Jr., people of color get dominated and mistreated in all of these nine areas of people activity. He goes on to say that there are three basic types of people in the known universe. One, white people who are those who classify themselves as white. Two are non-white people, those who have been classified as non-white. And then three are the white supremacists, which he calls racist man and racist woman collectively. Now, this is all out of his book, and this is all on the course, by the way. So if you end up um, doing the course, if you're a VIP member, you can just go into your account and then watch these videos. All the classes are online in um, at the hiddensciceacademy.com already. But if you're new to the Insights Academy and you join, this is what you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn this in class one. And he's got some definitions. So even though, because every time I do this as a, as a physical course, people say, what's the difference between one and three? Yeah, so one is white people, those who classify themselves as white. Two is non-white people, that's us. And he says, those who have been classified as non-white because we don't classify ourselves. That's the reason why every couple of years they come up with another classification for us where BAME, where people of color, where ethnic minorities, we're always being classified. They do the classification according to Neely Fuller. Yeah. And then three is the white supremacist. Now, every time I do this, I ask the question, is there a difference between one and three? Yeah. So I know there are some people that have done the course with me, but for those of you who haven't done the course with me, just quickly answer that question in the chat. Is there a difference between one and three? Yes or no? Is there a difference between one and three? Yes, yes, no, yes, no. So every time I do this, it's always a mixed reaction. It's always yeses and nos. It's always yeses and nos, yes, no, yes, no, yes. In other words, are all white people racist? That's basically the question, yeah? Now, according to Neely Fuller, according to Neely Fuller, there is a difference, yeah? So he, he, he doesn't believe that they are all racist. However, they all perpetuate the system, whether consciously or unconsciously. However, even though 
he believes that they're not all number threes. Yeah. Even though he believes they're not all number threes, he does go on to define another term. Check this out. This is straight from his book, and this is his definition. He's got a term called racist suspect or suspected white supremacist. What is a racist suspect? A white person who is able to be a racist. In a system of white supremacy, we are duty bound to suspect any white person of being a racist. Racist. So that's his term, yeah? Racist suspect. So even though they are not all racist, he believes that we should suspect them that they could be, yeah? So we're not calling anyone the R word because that's like the worst thing you can call white people these days, which is the R word. We're not calling anyone the R word. We're saying that in a system dominated by racism, there must be racists. And because we don't know who they are, we should suspect that you could be. Now, if that didn't make sense, let, I'm gonna let you hear it from the man himself. So this is a, a clip from him being on radio, Neely Fuller Jr. Listen to what he says with regards to this term. Well, the code requires me, and I decided a long time ago to adhere to it. This is what the code says. If a person who is classified as white in the system of white supremacy, which is the only real government on the planet, a person who is classified as white is classified as white and acts like a white person and says that he or she is a white person in the system of white supremacy, I am duty bound as a victim of white supremacy. This is a duty to suspect that that white person is a racist if he or she is able to be one. All right. So I hope everyone got that. We should suspect if they're able. Now, someone might ask, well, what makes them able? According to Neely Fuller Jr., according to the code, there's two things that um, make them there's two things that um, would classify them not being able to be a racist. One is babies. This is Neely Fuller Jr. talking. He's saying it just doesn't make logical sense for a baby to be racist. They can't even um, think before like and participate in the system yet. So he said babies, they're not. And he says people who are blind. Now, that is debatable. White people who are blind, by the way, because they can't differentiate color. That is debatable. And again, science is based off of observation. So it's always good that we can challenge these things. But according to Neely Fuller, those are the only two ways that they could potentially not be. Yeah. So other than that, you might need to suspect. So if a white person is being nice to you, a white person at work, they could still be a racist. I hope that makes sense. Now, this is part of his book as well. He mentions very early on in the book that there are two facts in the world. The first fact is that white people of the known universe collectively are the smartest and most capable of all people. And then fact number two is the white supremacists, which he calls racist man and racist woman collectively, are the smartest and the most capable of all the white people. Now, every time I do this on the course, everyone disagrees everyone disagrees they're not the smartest we're the smartest they're not smarter than us it always causes you know a, a big reaction yeah and when i used to do this as a physical course i'd ask them because um when neely fuller says they're smart it's not necessarily a compliment because you can be smart and deceptive you can be smart and evil you can use your smarts to trick people, yeah, and cause damage, cause harm. So it's not necessarily a um, a good thing to call them the smartest. But people didn't like that. On the course, every time we do it, especially the physical course, people are like, nah, they're not smart, they're not the smartest, blah, blah, blah. They're evil, they're this, they're that, they're not the smartest. 
So I asked people, and this is a clip from one of my physical courses. This was like three, three four years ago at my university, London South Bank University. You can see the two facts are on the screen right now. And this was straight after I showed the two facts and everyone's saying, nah, they're not the smartest, they're not the smartest. So I asked everyone the question, well, how do you define smart? What would you say smart is? Listen to their answers. So what does smart mean to most people? Able to do what you want, when you want to do it, irrespective of anything or anybody else. Able to do what you want, when you want. Can they do that? Yeah. Can they do that? Yeah. Okay. Problem solving. No. Problem solving. Yeah. If you're smart, you can solve a problem. Yes? Yeah, I think part of it is the planning ahead, the, the psychological planning ahead. Planning ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you're smart, you can if you're smart, you can create a problem or a problem. Okay, I hope everyone got that. So two things that I wanted you to take away from that small, very short clip, yeah? One of the students said, if you're smart, you can solve a problem, yeah? You can't say you're smart if you can't solve problems. So if you're smart, you can solve a problem. But then one of the other students said, if you're smart, you can create a problem. Hmm. Create a problem. Think about that, family. Creating a problem. All right. Now, in the book, Neely Fuller says that um, we have to go over certain terms. So in the book, especially early in the book, he asks the question, who are the experts? So the question in the book is, during the existence of white supremacy, which is racism, which persons are the only experts in knowing and understanding how white supremacy is practiced? And the answer is those white people who practice white supremacy. In other words, there are no other experts. It's just those white people who practice it. Yeah. And this is where I feel like um, sometimes when I do the course, it creates cognitive dissonance because a lot of us, we feel like we're experts, yeah? A lot of us will go on TV and try and explain, explain racism to white people when they're the experts, yeah? So if you understand that family, if I was to ask you anytime you see a black person on TV talking to white people about racism, who are the experts? These are the experts, but look at their faces. Look at their faces. This is something that they do on a regular basis. They act fake confused, yeah? Especially about this subject. Look at their faces. They're all like, oh, tell me, we don't understand. But that is fake confusion. And we're gonna go over that. That's in one of the rules, yeah? They act fake confused. They are the experts. They are the ones who practice this thing on a regular basis. So they know it better than us. They just act fake confused. And for, for some reason, we feel like we're experts just because we're victims of it. Well, using logic, that would make cancer patients vic um, experts in cancer. Or someone who suffers from type 2 diabetes, an expert in diabetes. If you asked... I'm sure someone in your family suffering from type 2 diabetes or high blood pressure, ask them, are they an expert in it because they suffer from it? I'm gonna tell you no. How did you catch it? Um, I'm not sure. How can you resolve this issue, this type 2 diabetes that you got? I'm not sure, but you suffer from it. Same with us, we suffer from this thing, but we're not the experts. Hope that makes sense. All right, so that's rule number one, family. By all means, if you want to ask your question, raise your hand or put it in the chat and we can debate it. Here's rule number two. Thou shalt not tell the truth about history. Thou shalt not tell the truth about history. When I say they all follow this rule. And this is how they do it. Ignore. Just refuse to publish any facts of African history that don't go along with our racial theories. We need to create a religious and a scientific doctrine so that uh, African slavery won't appear that bad after all. What we need to do is flood the world with new African histories that contain our European perspectives only. Start renaming people and places. 
replace African names with Arabic and European names. This will disguise their true black identity. It's changed the criteria for defining race. For example, one drop of Negro blood in America makes you a Negro, no matter how light the skin. Yes, and when reporting ancient African history, reverse the standard. No matter how dark the skin, woolly the hair, or thick the lips, you don't have to be a Negro. When black contribution to civilization is too obvious, let's find a way to attribute it to outside white influences. When all the ancient historians contradict your theory, we'll just discredit them. All right, I hope everyone got that family. That's exactly what they do with history. That is exactly what they do with history. Um, people asking where I got this from. I actually got this from Robin Walker. So big up the black history, man. This is why it's so important for us to have someone like Robin Walker in our community. Robin Walker, the black history man, for those of you who are not from the UK, Robin Walker is the scholar who wrote the amazing book, uh, When We Ruled, which is like the textbook, the, the ultimate textbook for black history, detailing um, what we were doing way before slavery. But yeah, he showed this clip on one of his courses and I can't remember how I got it from him. I think I searched it on YouTube or something like that, but I, I can't remember the, the title of it, but this is that's where I got it from, Robin Walker, yeah? But this is what they do. And if you listen to them, they'll tell you that they do this. So this is a racist suspect, one of their greats, Winston Churchill. This is what he actually said. This is a quote from Winston Churchill. History will be kind to me for I intend to, to write it. So history will be kind to me for I intend to write it. So he understands that it doesn't matter what happens in history, I'm going to write my own history. So I'll just, you know, erase yours and write mine. This is how they think, this is their mindset. And some white people are familiar with this fact. Some white people do, you know, tell the truth to a certain degree about what's going on. One of them, you could argue, is this lady here, um, who I'm sure some of you are aware of. Her name is Jane Elliott. Listen to what she says about how we're educated on history. Education in this country is about white is right, brown's all right, black's got to stand back. Yellow's mellow, but whites, we, we educate in a way that says that white males have done all the adventures, have made all the adventures, have done all the discovering, have made all... And, Everything that is good and has been accomplished has been accomplished according to social studies, which is actually anti-social studies, by white males. It's a lie. But we do that in order to maintain the myth of white superiority. The myth of race has to be maintained at all costs in this country. Because if white people have to give up the color of their skin as being something that makes them perfect, what do they have left? If we start teaching the truth about history, if we start teaching about Nile Valley contributions to civilization, it will totally change the way we conduct ourselves in the classroom. It will have to. Columbus didn't discover America. You can't discover a place where people are already living. But we celebrate that every October. It's a lie. We need to get over, we, all, we need to stop telling the myths and start telling the truth. Does that make sense, family? I like what she said when she said, can you imagine if they started teaching the contributions to the now uh, the now valley contributions? In other words, she started to talk about ancient Kemet. Yeah, imagine if they taught the children about ancient Kemet. For those who don't know, ancient Kemet is the original name for ancient Egypt. Kemet meant land of the blacks. Yeah, and it was the land of the blacks. If you do some research online, they'll make you believe that the term Kemet meant black land and they were talking about the soil they will never ever ever admit that the ancient egyptians were black people despite the obvious evidence despite the obvious evidence they will never admit it because what is their rule never tell the truth about history never tell the truth about history and you guys can test this out. Again, science is based off of observation. If you have a white friend, a cool white friend, just ask them, were the ancient Egyptians black? And see what they say. See what they say. 
because for some strange reason, it's extremely difficult for them to admit this. Why can't they admit this? But obviously, if they admit this, it changes everything. So this is like, in recorded history, some would say that um, ancient Kemet was the greatest civilization known to man. So they can't admit that those were black people that built the pyramids and you know wrote the hieroglyphs and that sort of stuff. It just wouldn't make sense. So they have to lie about this. But how does that affect our children when they lie about this, when they lie about our history and don't tell us about our history? Your children end up watching movies like this. These are supposed to be ancient Egyptians. So every time there's a, um, a Hollywood movie about ancient Egypt, they're seeing Europeans play Africans. Think about how that's going to affect them psychologically. And you don't even need to think about it. Let's listen to our children and let them tell us how it affects them. Of what would happen to you if you didn't know who you were? If you looked in the mirror every morning and you saw this little brown face and everybody thought it was so ugly, what do you think would happen to you? Well, you wouldn't think very much of yourself and you think, you know, you were nothing and nobody cared for you or anything. You didn't have any history, no background. You couldn't go forward because you didn't really know what had happened to you before. Before the time, well, uh, in history, uh, before even that century, or what your people had done, so you could be there that day or whenever it was. Aha, uh -huh. that is. Everyone get that? So even if our children are aware, they'll know how not knowing their history will affect them. Yeah, they'll know how not knowing their history is going to affect them right now and affect them in later life. Yeah, so they'll never tell us the truth about history. There's certain things that they will tell us and they still won't tell us the truth. There's certain things about slavery that they still won't tell us. Yeah, there's certain things. And when we do find out the truth, they'll tell us to get over it. Get over it. Come on, man. That was a long time ago. Why are you still complaining about that? Get over it. So they don't want to tell us the truth about our history, whether it was before slavery or during slavery. But then when we do find out something and we just talk about it, oh, get over it. Why are you talking about that? That was such a long time ago. Yet they want us to never forget what happened on 9-11, which is tomorrow, right? 9-11. They want us to never forget. So tomorrow, oh my gosh, hashtag never forget, hashtag never forget, never forget, never forget. What do they want us to never forget? They want us to never forget that two planes apparently flew into two buildings and three buildings crumbled to the ground. I repeat, two planes flew into two buildings, apparently, and three buildings crumbled to the ground. They want us to never forget that. And again, people keep on forgetting that there were three buildings. It weren't just the World Trade Centers, the, the twins. It was World Trade 7 as well. You guys can look this up. World Trade 7 crumbled to the ground as well, but no plane went in it. How can you explain that? And during the time when 9-11 first happened, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the, um, the live um, broadcast at the time, if you watched it, some of the people were just saying what they saw. Because remember, they told us that a plane went into the Pentagon as well. Well, this was footage that was aired straight away. Like the person was actually at the Pentagon. Listen to what they say. Outside the Pentagon, CNN's military affairs correspondent, Jamie McIntyre. And Jamie, you got very close to where that plane went down. That's right, Judy. A short uh, a, a while ago, I walked right up to next to the building. Was uh, uh, Firefighters were still trying to put out the blaze. The, the fire, by the way, is still burning in some parts of the Pentagon. And I took a look at the 
huge gaping hole that's in this sideway, but from my close-up inspection, uh, there's no evidence of a plane having crashed anywhere near the Pentagon. The only site uh, is the actual uh, side of the building that's crashed in, and as I said, the only pieces left uh, that you can see are, are small enough that you could pick up in your hand. Uh, there are no large uh, tail sections, wing sections, uh, a fuselage, nothing like that anywhere around. All right, so he was like, there was no plane fan. I don't see no um, wings, no tail, no nothing. There's no plane. There's no plane here. So they want us to never forget that two planes allegedly flew into two buildings and four buildings were damaged. Family, if they can convince you about this story, confuse you and make you believe this story, they can make you believe anything. All right. Now, let's go on to rule number three. Thou shalt hide the truth about science. Now, this is a big one because science, uh, especially in the last couple of years, everyone was talking about science because of the pandemic and that sort of stuff. But we don't know the truth about science. What's going on? A lot of us, we don't understand science. science. We find science very confusing. Thou shalt hide the truth about science. Why? Because a lot of the scientific breakthroughs that have happened in the last 70 years have been due to this black woman, are we all familiar with Henrietta Lacks? The black history that's not taught in school, the mother of modern day genetics. We should all know her story. Henrietta Lacks was a young black woman who died of cervical cancer in 1951. But just before she died, they took um, samples from her cells and done experiments with her cells in a laboratory and they found that her cells were multiplying uh, even after she died. So they were like, rah, they called her cells immortal cells and they started to do scientific experiments with them. Do you know that most scientific breakthroughs, I wouldn't even say most, all scientific breakthroughs that have happened in the last 70 years is due to this black woman here. Do you know that her cells are still alive today? They still use her cells for scientific experiments. You guys can look this up. They used her cells to do experiments on the COVID-19 vaccines. These are the black, these are the cells that they used to experiment on the COVID-19 vaccine. Yeah. So this is the reason why they will never tell the truth about science, because if they did, it would go back to black genetics. It would go back to us if they started to tell the truth about science. That is the reason why this book is so important. Because this book, which is my debut book, The Hidden Science of Melanin, reveals the truth about science, the stuff that they don't want us to know. So all that stuff that I just said about Henry Alax is in this book. A lot of the stuff that they don't want us to know with regards to science is in this book. And that's another reason why they won't tell the truth about science, because not only does it go back to us, it goes back to this melanin. And they don't want anyone talking about melanin because we'll start putting two and two together out here. So that is rule number three. Thou shalt not tell the truth about science. Here's rule number four. Thou shalt use black people to push thy agendas. <laughs> I hope you guys are writing this down because we're going to do a review at the end. This is rule number four. Thou shalt use black people to push thy agendas. We got Francesca saying, amazing book. Thank you for everyone who's bought the book so far. Large up. Sister Barbara, if you can put the link to my book in the chat, just in case anyone wants to buy it. But this is rule number four, family. Thou shalt use black people to push thy agendas. They do this a lot. And during the pandemic, oh, they went into overdrive doing this. They use us to push their agendas. Never did we see it as much as we saw it during the pandemic. We love you. We don't want you to get sick. We don't want you to die. So please, hear us. And when your turn comes, take the jab. They love doing this with us. They know that in order to influence us, we need to see a black face, yeah? Because we don't, just instinctively, we don't trust other people especially a white face so if they want to push an agenda they know they have to get one of us to push it yeah and a black face is powerful but you know what's more powerful than a black face a celebrity 
blackface. I'm Morgan Freeman. I'm not a doctor, but I trust science. And I'm told that for some reason people trust me. So here I am to say, I trust science and I got the vaccine. If you trust me, you'll get the vaccine. There you go. They use us to push their agendas. And another agenda is they use us to be the face of disease. Yeah, that's one thing that they have to do. They, because again, agenda with getting us on medication and that sort of stuff. So anytime they want to push medication out there, you know, taking drugs, basically, they have to use our faces to push their agenda. So we're, we're the face of disease. We are the face of all of the disease. We're the face of type 2 diabetes. Again, there's nothing more powerful than a celebrity black face. Yeah, so they get a celebrity to be the face of disease. But we're also the face of prostate cancer. Yeah. So this is from Men's Health. It says, why are black men 30% more likely to die from prostate cancer? Again, using us to push their agenda, because who knows if this is true? Why are we? You ask the experts, why are we more likely? And they're like, mm, we're not sure. We don't know. Yeah. Black women are more likely to die from pregnancy. Yeah. And then I saw this the other day. Why are so many black women suffering through infertility in silence? And so now black women can't have babies. By the way, um, IVF treatment, the only reason why they were able to do IVF treatment was because of Henrietta Lacks. So the reason why um, white women who started to struggle with fertility and started to go and do IVF treatment, which costs a lot of money, the only reason why they're able to do that is because of Henrietta Lacks, a black woman. So this is the reason why they'll never tell the truth about science. Because if we're talking about fertility, we're talking about black women's selves. Yeah. But now black women are struggling to have a baby. Who knows why? I don't know why. But this is them using us as the face of disease. But they always do this. Why do they always make us the face of disease? Yeah. Which is interesting because if you think about it, there's a lot of diseases out there where white people are more likely to suffer from them. Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, skin cancer. But you never see that in the news. You never see them promote that or push that or do um, banners and advertisements on that. Why is that? Well, because the system is called white supremacy and a lot of people don't like the word supreme, but there's no way you can keep up this supreme status if you're the face of disease. So they have to, have to, have to make us the face of disease. Because if they told us the truth that they're more likely to suffer from all of these diseases, then all of a sudden, black people will be looking around like, you guys, ain't, you guys ain't supreme. You're quite frail and fragile and weak. <laughs> you guys suffer from all these diseases. And trust me, they do. They're more likely to suffer from Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, osteoporosis, skin cancer, obviously. Yeah. Strokes. You guys can look this stuff up but you'll never see that in the news. They have to make us, even AIDS, when AIDS or HIV or whatever, when that first started to come out, who was more likely to get that? Gay white men. Now, all of a sudden, they've got a mascot. Now, all of a sudden, very successful, healthy, rich black men are now doing um broadcast saying that they they've got it and that you know everyone needs to take this thing seriously so yeah this is one of their rules use us to push their agendas all right we're halfway family number five thou shalt use confusion as your main weapon of violence what you need to understand about violence well this is from the book this is from neely fuller he says that the white supremacists they use violence in two ways, direct violence and indirect violence. Direct violence is just physically harming us, yeah? Shooting us in the street or what they did in slavery, whipping us or hanging us or whatever, direct violence. But they've changed now. They uh, made it a little bit more sophisticated. So they use indirect violence. Gone are the days where they can just use direct violence on all of us, it just doesn't work these days. And sometimes they still do, they'll still, you know, shoot us down and all that sort of stuff but um to control the masses you need to use indirect violence which is confusion 
in the book, in this book by Needy Fuller Jr., he says that confusion, deception, lies, falsehood, that is indirect violence. Now, why is it indirect violence? Because I told you at the start that confusion leads to pain. So if someone's trying to confuse you, they are trying to cause you pain. They are trying to cause you pain. Can you repeat number five? Number five is thou shalt use confusion as your main weapon of violence. I hope everyone understand that. This is a weapon that they use, confusion. You're, you're thinking, how is confusion going to um, cause violence? Because it causes pain. It will lead to conflict either internally or externally. Internally can be mental conflict. Externally can be conflict between people. That's going to lead to pain. And pain is not always physical. Pain can be physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, psychological. So confusion is indirect violence. Again, don't take it from me. Take it from the man himself, Neely Fuller Jr. Listen to this. The, the white supremacists have two basic weapons. Direct violence, that's shooting you down and whatnot and dropping bombs on you and all like that. That's direct violence. And indirect violence, which is what? Deception. Anytime I'm fooling you to your detriment, and you don't know that you're being fooled naturally because I'm not deceiving you if you're not deceived, but they are the masters of deceit. So that's how they keep the system going. And how do you deceive people better? What's the mechanics of deceiving people? What's the logic of deception? You make things appear to be what they are not. All right. So I hope everyone got that indirect but this is indirect violence confusion now there's various ways that they um, confuse us i go through that on the course so big up all the people that have done the course but think about what we saw during the pandemic what did we see during the pandemic we saw utter confusion start this morning in a state of utter confusion after last night's address to the nation by Boris Johnson. His speech created more questions than answers. And the answers seem to change every half hour and we're not the only people confused. Matt Lucas summed up last night's speech very well. So we are saying don't go to work, go to work. Don't take public transport, go to work, don't go to work. Stay indoors. If you can work from home, go to work. Don't go to work. Go outside, don't go outside. And, uh, and then we will or won't uh, something or other. Yep, well, that, that pretty that much is, sums it up. I can't... I, it, the, the problem is, I think we're all just about holding on. We've all done so well. We've all done exactly... Yeah, all right. So, utter confusion, yeah, during the pandemic. And they don't just do it that way. They use fake confusion as well. So, I've touched on this earlier. But the white supremacist's job is to create confusion, then act fake confused. They create all of this confusion, then act fake confused, like, what? Oh, what happened? Yeah. So here's a couple of examples. Now, this is an example that they do over and over and over again. Now, why do they do it over and over again? Because it works. What you need to understand is when they cause confusion, it's going to lead to some type of emotion from us. Some type of emotion from us. And Neely Fuller Jr. says that our emotion is their nutrition. So they feed off of our emotion. So every time they do something like this, they feed off of it. So Check this out. It says news outlets criticize for mislabeling photos of black MPs. So there was a story about the MP Dawn Butler, who is the one on the left. Yeah. And all of these um, corporations put up different pictures using the same story. So it's a story about Dawn Butler, but BBC put up a different picture of a different MP and Evening Standard put up a different picture, Getty Images. So this is this is what proves that it's a system. The system of white supremacy is a system. It's not just people, individuals. Look how many people are involved in just this little tactic that they do. It says there, the BBC, the Evening Standard and Getty Images apologize for after embarrassing mix up. How can you all get this wrong? How can you all make this mistake? It's not a mistake. That's what you need to understand. They do this on purpose to get a reaction out of us. So it got a reaction out of Dawn Butler. She had to go on Twitter and she, she had to say, I love my sister, Marsha, but we are two different people. And she's done a long post on Twitter explaining that this is out of order, that they got us mixed up. 
So Dawn Butler calls out BBC for confusing her with another black MP, but we don't understand the rules. So we think that they've done it by mistake. They don't do this by mistake. This is one of their tactics. This is one of their rules. They have to create confusion and then act fake confused. So the BBC is like, oh, sorry, we apologize. Like the BBC doesn't know who Dawn Butler is, yeah? And for some strange reason, family, and you guys can chime in on this, I have my own views, but for some strange reason, they love doing it with our athletes. They love doing it with sports stars, yeah? So this one, um, the guy on the left, guy on the right is a football player. His name is Lukaku. And um, the newspaper said Lukaku is ready for work, but put up a picture of Stormzy. For some strange reason, family, they love doing this with our athletes. Now, I've got my own views, but I'd like to hear you guys' views. Why do they love it with our athletes, yeah? This one, um, someone noticed this on Twitter. They said, did the BBC, notice that it's always the BBC, did the BBC just mistakenly put up a picture of Raheem Sterling when discussing an unnamed player accused of rape? Apology needed, but really, this is intentional. So, and then notice that they said mistakenly. This wasn't a mistake. Let me show you. And next, a Premier League player arrested on suspicion of rape has not been suspended and can fulfil his professional. And Zee will have more on that story a bit later on, but they say they can still travel. The player has not been named and still, still can um, travel. And all right, so I hope you all saw the... that. He, they put up a picture of Raheem Sterling, but they were talking about some player who been charged with rape. But I want you guys to um, think about why they always do it with athletes. Check this one out. And this one, again, they, remember, Neely Fuller said they do this for fun, glory, and material gain. So they do this for fun. They love doing this. They, they, they get such a laugh out of doing this. This was NBC News. Check this out. World record sprinter and eight-time Olympic gold medalist Usain Bolt has tested positive for the coronavirus and is self-isolated at his home in Jamaica. They use Kevin Hart's picture as Usain Bolt. And you think they've done that by accident? They used the smallest person they know and mixed him up with the, one of the tallest athletes we know. Yeah? They do this on purpose. They're probably thinking, oh, my gosh, that would be so funny. Let's put out a story um, talking about Usain Bolt, who's 6'5", and we replace his picture with Kevin Hart, who's 5'5". Five five. <laughs> I mean, and then if someone spots it, which they will, we'll just say, oh, really? What happened? I'm sorry. Create confusion, then act fake confused. Yeah. And again, family, chime in. Why do they do this with our athletes? So who remembers when the BBC had to apologize for using LeBron James footage in report in reporting Kobe Bryant's death? Yeah. Who remembers this? Kobe Bryant's daughter's Gianna was traveling with him and also died. His list of achievements is long. An all-star, an NBA champion, and an Olympic gold medalist, he was unashamedly competitive. And he was deeply frustrated when his playing career was cut short by injuries. All right, so why do you think they do this with our athletes? Again, and this is one of our, if you're into sport or if you're into basketball, you know, this is one of the greats. Kobe Bryant, he was an icon. He is loved, not just in basketball. A lot of people love Kobe Bryant and they made this mistake with one of our greats. Reporting his death and notice that it's the BBC again. Why do they always do this with our athletes? It's crazy. But again, it's not a mistake. They love to do this and they'll do it when they're reporting deaths as well. They, they don't care. It's quite sinister what they do as well, the way they do it, even if they're reporting deaths. And speaking of deaths, family, um, I'm not one to watch the news, but uh, I heard that. I heard that the Queen died a couple of days ago. So I want to just take a moment to send my condolences to the Queen. And her family at this at this sad time. I want us to take a moment to acknowledge the Queen, 
because I, I don't really watch the news, but I heard that she passed away. So I'd just like to take this moment to send my condolences to the Queen and her family. Just one moment. All right, let's move on. But yeah, they do this with children as well. So you guys know they do this in adverts. They'll use the black child, put him in a, a monkey hoodie, coolest monkey in the jungle. Then there's uproar from us. Oh, what do you mean coolest monkey? And then they use that emotion. They feed off of our emotion. It's like, like a vampire. They feed off of it like a vampire. Like, oh, give me your emotion. Yeah, we love it. And they feed off of it. They've been doing it for years. They love doing that, yeah? But this is the reason why it's so important for us to understand the rules. Because when you understand the rules, you can kind of not avoid them because they're all around us, but you can kind of play it off and not um, fall into the trap of reacting emotionally. So I'm going to show you this clip. Now, I love this clip, family. This is of Eddie Murphy back in the day, uh, young Eddie Murphy, yeah? And this guy's interviewing him. His name is Dick Cavett, yeah? And... Dick Cavett is going to do what they do. He's going to create confusion, then act fake confused. How is he going to create confusion? He's going to call Eddie the N-word, or he's just going to mention the N-word and see if Eddie reacts emotionally to it. But watch how Eddie Murphy plays this off. I love this clip. Watch how Eddie plays it off because he kind of knows what he's dealing with. He plays it off. This is how you do it when you understand the rules. Check this out. Are you offended by the word nigga in it? Why? Why? <laughs> Where did that come from? Did I say that? I... He's Sorry. like possessed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just that there's a big flap in various parts of the country where people want that you know, great you American novel that, taken yeah. off the show. So, did you see that, family? That is exactly what they do. Create confusion, then act fake confused. He's doing it in a funny way, but this is one of their rules. He creates the confusion, then acts fake confused. Did I say that? Are you offended by the word nigga in it? Why? Why? <laughs> Where did that come from? Did I say that? I... He's Sorry. like possessed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just that there's a big flap in various parts of the country where people want that you know, great you American novel that, taken yeah. off the shelves because of the word nigger. Nigger Jim is a character. I thought it, you were saying the very parts of the various parts of the country that where they enjoy hearing someone say that on television. <laughs> no, 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 no. This no. is cable. No, like I was sitting in Memphis like this. I like that Kevin boy. <laughs> <laughs> you see him say nigger right in front of me? <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> nigger sitting two inches away. He's just looking at eye. <laughs> Oh <clears throat> no! <laughs> no, I, I you, you know me better than that. I mean, the fact that I've done shows with George Wallace, the Le uh, Lester Maddox, and yet we're friends, and I think that's what America's all about. Mm -hmm. What's his face? Right, folks. What's his face? Yeah, that's how you play it off. That's how you play it off. So I love that clip. So when we understand the rules, we don't erect, we don't react emotionally to it because we understand our. You know, Neely Fuller calls them the usual suspects. The usual suspects are up to their usual tricks. Oh, you're trying to create an emotion out of me. Oh, let me flip it and, you know, avoid it. But for those of you who wonder, why do they do all of this confusion? Now, here's a quote by uh, an author by the name of Milton William Cooper. He wrote the book, Behold a Pale Horse. And his famous quote is, the general rule is that there is profit in confusion. The more confusion, the more profit. Hmm. I wonder who's making profit from all of this COVID confusion. I wonder who's making profit from all of these vaccines. So he says, the more confusion, the more profit. Therefore, the best approach is to create problems and then offer the solutions. Remember what the student said in my class. The student said, you can prove that you're smart by doing what? You prove that you're smart by creating problems. You can prove that you're smart by solving problems, but you can prove that you're smart by creating problems as well. So they create the problems, then offer the solutions. 
Hope that makes sense. All right, we've gone past the halfway point now. This is number six. This one's very important, but I'm sure you guys are familiar with this one. Thou shalt use tears and fake outrage to deflect away from racism. We should all know this one by now. Thou shalt use tears and fake outrage to deflect away from racism. And I've put there at the end, and to make black people feel bad. Because remember, your emotion is their nutrition. We need to make you feel bad. Yeah. So we're all familiar with fake tears. I'm sure we're all familiar with, you know, some people put in the chat, Karen's. Yes. Are you sick and tired of not getting your way whenever you want? Do people have the nerve to treat you like a normal member of society? Have you been accused of saying something racist and don't know how to shift focus? Introducing Entitled White Women's Tears, the revolutionary new solution that'll keep you looking your victimist. I used to listen to women of colour speak in general terms about how racism affects them and amend my behaviour accordingly. I apologise for anything that I've done that was ignorant and I'll be more mindful from now on. Thanks to Entitled White Women's Tears, I'm now perfectly comfortable explaining to them how they should be approaching their own activism and taking it as a personal attack when they call me out. Seriously, maybe you'd have more people on your side if you weren't so mean. Did you just make Cindy cry? But how is it about her? It's about me. I'm, I'm the best. <laughs> all right so they do this we're all familiar with this and i don't know if you guys are familiar with this this was actually a challenge a little game that they were playing on tiktok a couple of years ago where white women were fake crying literally doing what they do and then um changing at a split second check this out turn it off So there's a showing you what they do and someone said in the chat they use their tears as weapons yeah but they're very good at this and it, it affects our emotions again your emotions is their nutrition and one of the reasons why it's so hard to talk about this subject because i don't know if you guys are familiar with jason black he's very popular on twitter he's very popular on youtube and on facebook he once said that most black people try to talk about racism without talking about white people. I found that to be true. Because again, because a lot of us don't understand racism, we'll talk about it like it's this thing over here when it's not actually people. If there's racism, there must be racists. So if we're talking about racism, we must be talking about racists. I hope that makes sense. But a lot of us don't want to talk about it because it means talking about white people and then we don't want to make white people uncomfortable we don't want to make white people cry so we kind of avoid it again emotions thinking about theirs they're not thinking about ours so we all understand the tears thing but do we understand the fake outrage thing now i don't know if you guys are familiar with this this is actually dawn butler the the mp yeah and she was on bbc this was maybe a year ago or maybe a couple of years ago but watch how the racist suspect acts fake confused and then she goes into fake outrage when Dawn Butler states the obvious. Because when we talk about Labour values, we will win those votes back. We don't have to go on the conservative narrative, which is often uh, racist, which is often discriminatory, oh, no, which is often, which is often, which is often, which is often, which is often divisive. We don't need to go on the divisive policies in order to win our votes back. And there are but, borrowed votes, and we will get well, them. Well, Laura. Uh, sorry, I just find it extremely offensive that you call conservative narrative racist. I just think that that's rude and offensive. Some of them are racist who, who narratives. Are you, who are you talking? Who, who what? Your prime minister. Oh. I can't, that is outrageous. Has your prime minister never I think been honestly, racist? I think that is outrageous Has and your prime wrong, minister never been and racist? that you should not. I, it's just it's, it undermines politics and politi political discourse in general. If you're coming on here and calling the prime minister Has your racist, prime minister no, no, racist. no, he has no, not. not. Has he never said anything no, racist? No, honestly, I just think that is calling Muslim women let all right so i hope you got you guys got that the fake outrage the, the over exaggeration yeah they'll do this a lot now um i was going to show you another clip this is of kahindi andrews yeah and he's talking about the uk race and uh, race report that came out what was it last year where um was it tony sewell i think his name is 
he'd done the race report and he, he didn't find any institutional racism or structural racism or whatever else. But listen to how, I'm going to forward it and pause it at different parts, but listen to how the reporter goes into fake outrage. She starts to overreact when Kahindi states the obvious. Uh, well, we can speak now to Professor Kayindi Andrews from Birmingham City University. He is Professor of Black Studies there. Uh, hello, Professor Andrews. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, I don't know if you're able to listen to Mark Easton there. Uh, he was talking uh, about the author, authors behind the report as much as about the content. You are on record as being very strongly critical of this report. And I wonder if it's because you feel that in a sense you knew what the conclusions were going to be. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing surprising about this. And this was not a genuine attempt to understand racism in Britain. This was an attempt to PR, to change the narrative. And that's why they collected a bunch of institutional racism deniers to come out and say that institutional racism doesn't exist. So I'm not surprised at all today. Was that the question that they were set to find out if institutional racism exists in the UK? I mean, I think if you actually look at what the purpose of this was, because if you're saying the government wanted to understand the issue, we already had two reports relatively recently. The Race Disparity Audit, the David Lammy Review. You have th hundreds of people who work in these areas, credible people. The government did not go and ask the people who know about these issues. They went and asked people who they knew would tell them the problem doesn't really exist. That was what the role of this report was. It came straight from the culture wars. And it was not a general attempt to make any substantive change. Yeah. I mean, it's not... Well, we can speak now to Professor Kayindi. And... She's very calm right now. He's answering questions. She's very calm. But I just want to get to the point where she does the fake outrage or she just overreacts. Hold on a second. Listen to this. Fool, because it is clearly there. And even if you look at issues like social class and family breakdown, of course they have an impact. But to understand social class and family breakdown, you'd actually have to understand racism. So it's, it's completely disingenuous, everything that's come out of this report. Mm. All right, listen to um, this part now. Our uh, home editor there was saying that the report, in a sense, will have deepened divisions rather than uh, provided some uh, uh, a report of substance that people can properly uh, chew over. What, what do you feel about that? Again, I think that was the purpose. If you look at what the government has done since Black Lives Matter, all they've done is say, look, Black Lives Matter was terrible. This doesn't matter. The, there's no problems in the schools. There's no problems with the curriculum. There's no problems with the police. This isn't really an issue. And we have one of the, the government pursuing one of the most racist agendas, certainly in my lifetime. And has, why? Why do you say that? Well, sorry, I mean, why do you just, say a racist what, what, agenda? What? Why do I say that? Have you seen the immigration policy? I mean, the immigration policy. Oh, you heard that. Well, why? How dare you? Why? Like the, the fake outrage when he says the obvious. Yeah. So they all do this. And she's not white. But again, um, they'll use us people of color. She's not black, but she's a person of color to push their agendas. So we end up saying what they want us to say. So she's like they, they teach her, make sure you act fake outraged or you um, overreact when someone says that, you know, the government is racist or something like that. She's like, why? How? how why would you say that? Why? How dare you? Yeah, there you go. All right, let's go on to now. This is where it gets a bit deeper now, family. This one is huge. This is rule number seven. So we're nearly there, family. Rule number seven thou shalt control how black people communicate with each other. This one is huge, family. This one is so big. Yeah, by the way, rule number 10 is their number one priority. So stay right to the end. Rule number 10 is their number one priority. I'll repeat, rule number 10 is their number one priority, but I would have put this as their number one priority if rule, if rule number 10 wasn't so powerful. So stay right to the end to learn rule number 10. This is rule number seven. It is thou shalt control how black people communicate with, with each other. They have to, yeah? So obviously during the pandemic, we all saw this, we all saw the, the fact checkers and the blocking of information, the shadow banning, all that sort of stuff. People do it with us all the time. Hidden Science Academy, we can't get into your Zoom. We can't get into your webinar. What's going on? We're not receiving your emails, blah, 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 blah. They have to control how we communicate with each other. Yeah. Now, everyone suffered from this. Everyone was getting this on their social media um, feeds, false information and blocking and, and shadow banning. But we've been doing we. As black people, we've been getting this for years, even before the pandemic. They were putting us in Facebook jail and um, just, you know, um, just for talking about black issues on Facebook. Yeah, they'd block our posts, they'd 
shadow ban us. This was even before the, the pandemic, we were getting shadow banned. Check this out. I don't, we don't tend to use Facebook too much because of all of the, the controlling of how we communicate, but we were talking about our blacklistic health course. I've actually got a private group called Blackalistic Health on Facebook. So I posted in my private group <laughs> called Blackalistic Health. Guess what I posted about? My Blackalistic Health course. So I repeat, I've got a Blackalistic Health private group on Facebook. And I posted about my Blackalistic Health lecture in my Blackalistic Health <laughs> private group. And they said, this goes against our community standards on spam. So they blocked it. So no one got to see this post. Crazy. Yeah, but they have to control how we communicate. And I, we done an event at the Ethiopian embassy. Big up all the people that came to this event. It was called Health Alchemy. Amazing event last month at the Ethiopian embassy. When we posted about that, they said, this post goes against our community standards. So they blocked that. They have to control how we communicate and they do this in schools so certain schools will ban quote unquote black words certain schools will ban black words because of how we communicate they need to know what we're saying if they don't understand the word they'll just ban it what does that word mean no you can't use that word in the school you can't use that word you'll get in trouble yeah they have to control how we communicate it is so, so, so important for them to control how we communicate. So they banned this and um, it goes back to 2011. If you remember and big up the people that have watched my 2011 lecture. And if you haven't go to the hiddensciencecademy.com. There's a video. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's a video called the truth about um, the riots. Go watch that video where I break down what they did with Blackberry. When the riots happened in 2011. They were like, how did this happen? How are these youths communicating with each other? They realized that the young people were communicating with each other using Blackberries. So guess what they did? They shut down the company. These people don't play. And I went through this in the lecture so you guys can check it out on the hiddensciceacademy.com. Check this out. During that time, 2011, we need to understand how popular Blackberries were. During 2011, Blackberries were selling over, well, over 50 million devices in 2011 and they shut it down they literally destroyed the company because that's what we were using to communicate with each other so notice now no one uses blackberries these days when it was the most um popular phone during 2011 and then as you can see from this graph after 2011 they shut the thing down yeah and they have to, because the thing about um, Blackberries was it was untraceable. The messages, the pings, the messages that we were sending to each other was untraceable. So they can't have that. They have to be up in our business. They have to know what we're saying. They have to know what we're doing. And I don't know if you guys have seen this um, on social media, but this just literally explains their behavior. They have to, have to, have to be up in our business. When you're black, you're never really lonely because there will always be a white person all up in your business. Hmm. When you're black, you're never really lonely because there will always be a white person all up in your business. When you're black, you're never really lonely because there will always be a white person all up in your business. When you're black, you're never really lonely because there will always be a white person all up in your business. When you're black, you're never really lonely because there will always be a white person all up in your business. Hmm. When you're black, you're never really lonely because there will always be a white person all up in your business. All up in your business, yeah? And why do they have to do this? Because they have to control how we communicate. They need to know how we function. They need to observe us. They need to be around us. They need to learn what we're saying to each other. Yeah. And another reason why is because if one of us does elevate and get to a quote unquote powerful position, they need to be able to tell us what to say. So all of these um, black faces in high places, presidents, including President Obama, Obama, unfortunately, they just become puppets for the white supremacists. 
literal puppet. In other words, you are my puppet. I want you to say these exact words to your black community. And again, if you don't believe me, check this out. I ask you to be citizens. I ask you to be citizens. Citizens, not spectators. Citizens, not spectators. Citizens, not subjects. Citizens, not subjects. Responsible citizens building communities of service and a nation of character. Responsible citizens building your communities and our nation. See it there. No, our they literally have to control how we communicate so they can literally be our voice. They want to be our voice. They know that um, a black face, uh, especially a celebrity black face or an authoritative black face can control the black people. So we need to be able to control that person and control how they communicate with us. All right, so that one was big family. Number seven was huge. They have to control how black people communicate with each other. We're getting deep now. This one's number eight. So that was number seven. This one's number eight. Thou shalt investigate the problem, but never, ever, ever make steps to solve in it. This one's big as well, family. Thou shalt investigate the problem, but never, ever, ever make steps to solve in it. Where's the evidence of this? Well, this is just a list of the amount of people, people of color that have died in police custody over the last, this was only from 2018. And this list is old. So it was only a year. This, this is the amount of people who died in a year, um, people of color who died in a year in police custody or during some form of police um, altercation. Yeah. Now you can't even read those names. You can't even see those names. Let me show you one way you might be able to see the names. And you guys tell me, what names are you familiar with? This is just a list that a lot of us don't even know. What, how many of these names are you familiar with? You tell me. I'm sure we're all familiar with Mark Duggan. Someone said Smiley Culture. Yes, Smiley Culture. Mark Duggan. That was 2011. Riots. Okay, so we're familiar with that. But look at all of these names, family. Look at all of these names. But we don't know this. And when we do find out, guess what they do? Let's say we find out about one of these. What they will do is launch an investigation. So one of the most um, famous investigations was the one around Stephen Lawrence, the McPherson report. So after Stephen Lawrence was murdered by racists, they investigated, yeah? They were investigating this. But what happened after it? Um, the McPherson report, uh, McPherson um, produced this report and he actually put suggestions as to how they could improve institutional racism in the McPherson report. They didn't do any of the suggestions. So nothing changed after the McPherson report. But that is their thing. They will investigate, but understand when they say they're going to investigate, that means they're going to do nothing. I need the family to understand that. When they say they're going to investigate, that means they're going to do nothing. The only reason why they say they're going to investigate is to appease black people. Please don't riot. Don't worry, we're going to investigate. Please don't do what you did in 2011. We'll investigate. That way, black people calm down and then two twos, they go off and investigate and then we forget all about it. So check this out. This was from the other day. This was a couple of years ago. Stephen Lawrence murder investigation to become inactive after all lines of inquiry completed. So now they've stopped the investigation. But we don't even know what they came up with. We don't even know what was the conclusion. But according to them, the investigation has become inactive. In other words, we will investigate, which means we are going to do absolutely nothing. During the pandemic, they said that the BAME communities, whoever they are, the BAME communities are more likely to die from coronavirus. So it says here, the mortality rate has been so high in BAME communities that the government has launched a review to investigate the possible causes. This was from two years ago, family. What was the result of this investigation? Someone tell me. 
what was the result of this investigation? Don't worry, I'll wait. I'll tell you what the result was. Absolutely. Thank you, Kathleen. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. So when you hear they when you hear them say they're going to investigate, you now know that means they're going to do absolutely nothing. What about Grenfell Tower? Grenfell Tower, when that happened, everyone was in uproar to appease them. They were like, oh, no, we, we're going to launch an investigation. Check this out. Results of fire investigation may not be published for years. I wonder why. And underneath that, it says London mayor tries to calm residents and families concerned by promising that interim findings, findings will be released over the summer. In other words, please don't riot. Don't do anything, Black people. We're going to investigate. But yet you investigate and now you're going to say that what you found will not be published for years. Why? Because they know that Black people will rise up. They don't want what happened in 2011 to happen again. So they'll say, hey, listen, black people, don't worry, we're on it. We're going to investigate. Don't worry, just calm down. And we calm down, we forget about it. And then two, two, a day goes by, a week goes by, a month goes by, a year goes by, a decade goes by, and we've forgotten all about it. Yeah? If you don't believe me, science is simple. It's based off of observation. Anytime you're angry about anything, let's say you're angry on the Monday, are you that angry on the Friday? Of course not. So let time go by, and then that anger calms down. So they, they say to us that they're going to launch an investigation to calm us down. Let that emotion, let that anger calm down. And then we forget all about it. So Grenfell Tower, they launched an investigation. Nothing happened. And don't take it from me. Take it from um, Stephen Lawrence's mother. Even she said nothing happened. Nobody wanted to mention the word race in the whole thing. Because when I saw the residents who lived in that block, to me, it was under no doubt around the racism that existed at that time. Because I think, had that been a block full of white people in there, they'll have done everything to get them out as fast as possible and make sure that they did what they needed to do. Baroness Lawrence's comments aren't targeted at any individual. More than 25 years after her own son's death, Baroness Lawrence sees parallels in the Grenfell tragedy. Because you think how many more lives have lost in Stephen, how many families are grieving, and what, what has the authority done? Nothing really. You know, so in that respect, nothing has changed towards um, grieving family from the ethnic min uh, minority. Nothing has changed in that respect. Since her son died, what was it, 30 years ago, they said 25 years ago, whenever it was, nothing has changed. In other words, they've launched all of these investigations, nothing has changed. Yeah? What about the Windrush scandal? Remember the Windrush scandal, which is still going on, by the way, Fabley? Check this out. Home Office faces investigation over Windrush scandal for equalities, um, from Equalities Watchdog. What happened here? What happened here when they launched their investigation over the Windrush scandal? Now, I know my lady, she got fired. Wait, did she even get fired? I swear she didn't she resign or something. You guys help me out in the chat. Did this lady resign or did she get fired? I swear she resigned. I don't even think she got fired. Yeah. But that was the Windrush scandal. Exactly. Thank you. She resigned. So again, nothing happened. Nothing happened. So that was the Windrush scandal, which again is, is still going on today, family. And then let's speaking of today, only a couple of days ago, uh, a young, one of our young kings, got gunned down by the police in Streatham, yeah? And why did they gun him down? Who knows? But according to them, they didn't find a gun on him. So why were they chasing him? Who knows? But um, unfortunately, we lost one of our young kings the other day, yeah? His name was Chris Cabba. Chris Cabba. And check this out, family. You know, they cornered him. They were chasing him in cars and they cornered him. So it was an execution. They cornered his car and then shot him. And there was no gun found, yeah? So guess what's gonna happen after this? This was only a couple of days ago. Guess what's gonna happen? 
Yeah, the police watchdog says that no gun was found in a car of a man who was fatally shot by armed officers after a chase in South London. The family of Chris Cabber, who was 24 and was due to become a father, have called for a full murder investigation into his death earlier this week. Let's speak to Nick Dixon, who's at Scotland Yard. Uh, Nick, so no gun found. Uh, what are the family saying? Morning, Ranveer. The family of Chris Kaba have made it very clear that they want answers and they want accountability as well. The 24-year-old died following a, a police pursuit in South London in Streatham Hill on Monday night. Now, at the end of that pursuit, his car, Chris Kaba's car, was hemmed in by two police vehicles. One round was fired from a police weapon and it's now being confirmed that uh, Chris Kaba was unarmed that no gun was found in his vehicle and his family clearly want answers and a thorough a thorough a thorough the police watchdog has said it is now investigating the incident which means little information can be given but the local mp says tensions are rising she wants more information from the police people are drawing their own conclusions looking back at what happened with mark duggan looking back and this is dawn butler According to the white supremacist, this is Dawn Butler, by the way, family. Dawn Butler, let's hear what Dawn Butler's got to say, according to the white supremacist. Um, to 2011, and, and again, looking back over the time when we don't get the information that we need about an incident on the basis that it's being investigated. And as I've said, what always happens is, because we're left out of certain pieces of information, information about the, the individual involved, usually negative information is put out there, and no information about what's happened on the police's side. It's a call echoed by many here, nearly 24 hours on, and so little information into exactly what happened. Frankie McCamley, BBC London, Streatham. Streatham. She said it like she was from Streatham, boy, Streatham. But this is what they do. They launch an investigation, but now we know, family, let's all say it together. When they say they're going to launch an investigation, that means they're going to do absolutely positively let's say it together family nothing absolutely nothing now this was today family i got this picture online today they're in the streets for this for this young king yeah so who knows they they might have to do something this time because they're already in the streets for chris Kaba. this was today family this picture is from today so, boy, they might have to do something this time because, you know, the young people, them, they, yeah. You, everyone remembers what happened with Mark Duggan. What happened after that one when they didn't, when they did nothing? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? All right. So that one was big family. We're coming to the end now. What are we on? Number nine. Number nine, the ninth rule of racism is thou shalt use projection to justify killing black people. Thou shalt use projection. Now, what is projection? What is projection? Projection is when you project onto someone else what you truly are. So if I said to someone, you're a liar, you're a liar, you're a liar, but I'm the liar, that's projection, yeah? And they do this to justify killing black people. Now, um, I'm hoping that everyone's familiar with this famous scholar. His name is Dr. Amos Wilson. He's got Dr. Amos Wilson. During his time, he was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, black psychologists we've ever had. And the way he broke down racism, the way he broke down the psychology of it, from their perspective and our perspective, no one better. And his lectures are online, so you guys can check out hundreds of his lectures online, yeah? But um, there's a guy on YouTube who made like um, cartoons of some of his lectures. So I'm going to just show you a clip and he talks about projection in this clip. So listen to how he explains projection in this clip. So it's a cartoon, but this is Dr. Amos Wilson. Listen to this. White Americans have a criminal history. They have a criminal nation. The nation is built on criminality and murder and exploitation. It is a part of their collective psyche. The United States is a mafia government. No one has done more damage and degradation and murder, rape and robbery 
than Europeans. Yes. Therefore, in order to escape confrontation with their true criminal nature, they must accuse others of being criminals. What we call projection. They must become obsessed with the criminality of other people. And black folk become those other people, you see. But as Kim Clark say, uh, Clinton, uh, Clinton Cox say, you call the Indians savages so you could behave toward them what? Savagely. That's the function of stereotyping, you see. If I call you a criminal, then I can treat you what? Criminally. I don't owe you justice. In fact, shooting you in the street is justice. We know you are already a criminal. Why should we bother to take you to trial? Yes, that's what it is. We're doing a service. We're saving the taxpayers money. What have we lost? A criminal? What are you complaining about? <laughs> yeah. Hope that makes sense. That is projection. And they do it to justify killing. So they did it with Mark Duggan. Remember, they labeled him a criminal. They labeled him a gangster. Oh my gosh, Mark Duggan was such a gang. They, they made us believe that he was such a gangster. Yeah. And remember, they, they cropped his picture to make him look more sinister when he was at um, his daughter's grave. So they do uh, little things like this. This is called projection. You're talking about gangsters. Who are the biggest gangsters the world has ever seen? Talking about gangsters. They want to make it seem like young black men are, are gangsters. That's crazy. But this is what they do. Projection. I'm going to project onto you what I truly am. So I'm going to project onto you criminality. You're a criminal. That way I can treat you criminally. Yeah. And guess what they're going to start doing? They've already done it. They're going to do it with Chris Cabba. So the, the, the young king who just got shot, they're labeling him a rapper. Now, if you've watched any of my um, previous white supremacy lectures, you know that rapper is code word. Rapper is one of their code words for thug, for the N word. Yeah. So when they label him a rapper, that's just criminalizing him because they know that people, when they read rapper, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, oh, these rappers, these thugs, these gangsters, these N words, they're going to associate the word rapper with criminality. They didn't have to put rapper in this. So this is the son. Tragic twist. Rapper Chris Cabba shot dead. Yeah, they could have just put Chris Cabba. They didn't have to put rapper. But this is what they do. This is projection. Yeah. So they're already doing it with Chris Cabba. And they're, I'm sure um, if there is a little bit of unsettling in the streets, they're going to pull up a lot more of this to show that he wasn't an angel or something like that. Yeah. Um, I mentioned this in one of my lectures. This was a lecture from a couple of years ago. This one was from, I think this one was from the Hidden Science of Black Love. And I mentioned that if you're talking about gangsters, you can't be talking about black people. Listen. So we need to understand gang violence, that's not our culture. We've learned that, yeah? But the media is very powerful. The media will make you think that young black men are criminals and gangsters. I ain't never met a black gangster in my life. Never. I've read about gangsters though. So you're telling me these people came to this indigenous land, shot and killed everyone on the indigenous land, took over the land, renamed the land, and then told the world that they discovered it. That's gangster. <laughs> Talk about gangster. Come on, man. Let's not talk about gangster and open up history books and see who's done the most gangster stuff in the whole world. Yeah. You go. Jen. And no one, no one broke this down better than the honorable Minister Franco. Look, I'm sure we've all seen this clip, but this clip is gangster. Yeah. Watch how he deals with my guy when he tries to talk about Nigeria. Yeah. You go to Nigeria which is, if not the most corrupt nation in Africa, and it is, it could be the most corrupt nation in the world, Minister Farrakhan. Oh, and now, Mr. Wallace. It is the most corrupt nation that I have ever covered. I've been there 25 years ago, and I've been there as recently as last year. Fine. So what? 
35 years old. That's what that nation is. Now, here's America, 226 years old. You love democracy, but it, there in Africa, you're trying to force these people into a system of government that you just have accepted 30 years ago, black folk got the right to vote. You're not in any moral position to tell anybody how corrupt they are. You should be quiet and let those of us who know our people go there and help them get out of that condition. But America should keep her mouth shut wherever there's a corrupt regime, as much hell as America has raised on the earth. No, I will not allow America or you, Mr. Wallace, to condemn them as the most corrupt nation on earth. When you have spilled the blood of human beings, has, has Nigeria dropped an atomic bomb and killed people in, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Have they killed off? millions of Native Americans? How dare you put yourself in that position as a moral judge? I think you should keep quiet. Jeez. Because with that much blood on America's hands, you have no right to speak. I will speak because I don't have that blood on my mm -hmm. hand. Yes, there's corruption there. Yes, there's mismanagement of resources. Yes, there is abuse. There's abuse in every nation on earth, including this one. So let's not play holy Ooh. to moralize on them. Let's help them. I'm not moralizing. I'm asking a question and I got an answer. Why would you put it as the most corrupt regime in the world? That doesn't make sense. Can you me. think of one more corrupt? Yeah, I'm living in one. Bruh, bruh, bruh. Love that clip. Dealt with him differently. But that is it. They try and use projection and try and tell us that we're criminal and we're this and we're that when they're talking about themselves, yeah? powerful powerful clip yeah projection though i want the family to understand that that's how they project they project their culture their criminality culture onto us yeah and this family is another form of projection they project their culture onto us through their movies their tv shows their adverts that sort of stuff this is how they install their culture into us and our children yeah so I don't know if you guys are familiar, um, aware of this. If you've been following the Hidden Science Academy, following some of my lectures, you know that I feel like they have a vampire culture. So they install that vampire culture into us through movies and TV shows and that sort of stuff. So every year there has to be a vampire movie. Every year there has to be a vampire TV show. On Netflix right now, there's a, vamp there's a new vampire movie with Jamie Foxx in it. Right now, they're promoting a vampire movie with Jamie Foxx in it, yeah? Now, understand what a vampire is. A vampire is someone who steals your energy. That's their culture, stealing, stealing your energy. You can't just live off your own energy. You have to take someone else's energy, suck their energy, yeah? So this is how they install, this is how they project their culture into us, yeah? Through their, through their media, through their films, TV shows, and that sort of stuff. Because... You guys help me out. If I was to ask you, what is white culture? What would you say? What is white culture? Put some, put some examples in the chat. What is it? <laughs> I, I'm not even gonna read out some of these. What is answers. white culture? <laughs> All right, now listen to this. This guy went around the streets and he just started asking random white people, what is white culture? Listen to what they say. Listen to what they say. What is white culture? White what? Culture? I don't even know. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know if there is a white culture. <laughs> what is white culture? Well, that might go back, but go back to white privilege then if, if you're looking deeper. But white culture? People say, like, when people are defending black culture, and they go, oh, what about white culture? But white culture is nothing. We have Irish pride, and we have Italian pride, and black culture is made up because African culture was lost. Ooh. Oh, gosh. Um... What is white culture? Oh, wait, white culture is taking everybody else's stuff. Yes, that's yeah. white culture. That's white culture. There you go. Taking everybody else's stuff, stealing the energy, the resources, the lands of other people. That's a vampire culture. 
yeah and that's how they project that onto us they have to come out with these movies every year there's a vampire movie every single year they have to make that the norm because that is their culture they don't even know that is their culture all right family we're coming to the end now this is number 10 out of the 10 rules of racism and like i said earlier number 10 is their number one priority number 10 is their number one priority what is the 10th rule of racism are you ready family drum roll please the 10th rule of racism is thou shalt break up the black family this is their number one priority they have to do this yeah and they do it in various ways i'm just going to show you some examples just on social media and this 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 rule links back to a lot of the previous rules like controlling how we communicate that's because of this you know not telling the truth about history that's because of this not telling the truth about science that will lead back to melanin that's because of this so a lot of them a lot of the ones that i just went through the reason why they do those rules is because of this rule yeah but here's some examples so this was on facebook there was a um uh, a group called black lives not black lives black love matters yeah it was a page on facebook and they just post pictures of black families and you know they kept on removing their posts and you know putting them into facebook jail i kid you not they do this on facebook and i remember when people first told me about this i was like nah this can't be true and check this out this was just a picture it was on one of the facebook pages it says black love is amazing and look at one of the look at one of the comments <laughs> it's racist they have to break us up family it is their number one priority and i didn't feel like i didn't think this is real until like we had a wellness weekender what was it in april we had a wellness weekender big up the people that came to our wellness weekender where we take 200 of you to a four-star hotel and we have uh, powerful lectures throughout the day we have a gala dinner and dance in the evening we have uh, raw juice in workshops there's sauna jacuzzi swimming pool all that sort of stuff just a beautiful atmosphere with like-minded people melanated people and when we was at this wellness weekender um sister barbara big up sister barbara who's on the call right now she was taking pictures of the couples at the wellness weekender and i put up a post with the couples again in my private black holistic health group and they said this post goes against our community standards so i put up a post about the black love at our wellness weekender and facebook blocked it Speaking of our Wellness Weekend, the family, the next one is in December. So big up the people who have already booked. But if you're thinking about booking, Sister Barbara, if you can post the information with regards to the Wellness Weekend, we are actually doing, um, you can put down a deposit. So you've got to contact Sister Barbara. She'll put her information in the chat. We've got a Wellness Weekend coming up, family. So, and by the way, there are discounts for VIP. So get on that, family. This is why... You got to understand if this is their number one priority, we got to make this our number one priority. We got to make black love our number one priority. Yeah, because this one is huge. So there you have it there. There you have it, family. Those were the 10 rules of racism. So I'm now going to open up the chat. I see a couple questions in the Q&A. So we're just going to do a little live Q&A now. If there was anything that was confusing, you guys can raise your hand and ask your questions or just make your comments or put your question or comment in the chat. So raise your hand if you wanna talk, if you wanna go live and we'll make you go live. All right, 
Ricky, you can unmute your mic if you want to ask your question live. And whilst you're trying to find your mic, let me see, let me go into the Q&As and see what questions you guys have. Okay, I'm gonna lower everyone's hands now. Some people were clicking on raising hands on, um, accidentally. So I'm gonna lower your hands. If you wanna talk, raise your hand and I'll allow you to go live. So quick question, just curious. Why are these numbered in Roman numerals? Oh, done it in Roman numerals to um, copy what they do with the 10 commandments. So I did that at the beginning. Let me just show the family that. So for those of you who weren't here at the beginning, I mentioned that these are the Ten Commandments, which they don't follow. So I made that clear from the start. These are the Ten Commandments, which they don't follow, and they put them in Roman numerals. So then after that, I did the Ten, the ten Rules of Racism, following their Ten Commandments sort of um numbering yeah so these are the the 10 rules that they don't follow and i just gave you the 10 rules that they do follow hope that makes sense all right yes family thank you very much so let me see if there's any questions all right ricky you raised your hand again so i'm assuming you want to go live can you unmute your mic ricky are you there All right, whilst Ricky's trying to find the mic, let's go to Grace. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes, Grace, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, very well. Well, first, I just want to thank you for such an excellent, excellent session. Um, very, very insightful, and I particularly loved um, some of the examples you gave, especially when you talked about 9-11. Um, um, Mm -hmm. and um, the four buildings and um, and when you look at what happened with Grenfell that building that we saw burn for at least two three days uh, but notice that the structure didn't crumble exactly it remained intact uh, but it's fascinating that four structures in America could not just crumble but they collapse systematically from all four corners of the building went down in one almost like it was an explosion like a dynamite almost um, like it was you know yeah so in, i mean uh, inside job exactly so you know you talked about cognitive dissonance dissonance yeah dissonance it's it's really really a powerful concept and mm -hmm. during this covid time this last two years we've seen some of your rules play out in other ways not just in terms of racism but even on their own people mm. um, covid umbrella i recognize some of those rules actually playing out mm -hmm. so you know it's interesting time thank you for that grace thank you very much uh, Sonia, can you unmute your mic, sis? Sonia and Ricky, you raised your hand again. Let's see if you can try again. Let's see who else we can get on. Uh, whoops. Sonia, can you unmute your mic? No. All right, let me see if there's any questions. All right, so this one says, regarding controlling how Black people communicate, does that also include how Black people communicate with one another, i.e. calling each other the N-word, calling Black women the B-word, swearing at each other, etc., through film and music? Good question. Yes, that does. So um, because they control our language, basically, so if you watch the lecture, I showed that even in school, they control how we communicate. They control the words that we use. So when they allow a word to be used, you got to understand why they're allowing it. So if they're banning certain words, us as young people using certain words, you're like, don't use that, don't use that, don't use that. But then we use the, the B word with each other with, or with our women. 
and they don't say anything, they're like, cool, you can use that. Then obviously there's an agenda there. They're, they're still controlling our communication. They're still controlling how we communicate with each other. Like, And obviously the reason why we're using that is because of what they're allowing us to see. So in the music, they're allowing that language because they, they literally can ban that language as well. And if you don't believe me, ask Ice Cube and Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson said the word Jew in one of his songs and um, they were looking to ban the song. They, he had to, I think they muted it out of the song or whatever. He said the word Jew in one of the song, in one of his songs. And they damn near tried to shut him down. And then Ice Cube, he was talking about, I think he was talking about Jews as well. Um, well, who was Ice Cube talking about? Any, um, any hip hop connoisseurs in the chat? They tried to ban Ice Cube because of what he said in one of his records. But yeah, Ice Cube, they, they can, whatever music they allow, that's because they want it to influence the children. All right, let me see if I can get Henry up in there. You, yeah. yes, King. I'm there still. Yo, bro, you good? I'm good, King. How are you? I'm good, my brother. I didn't catch everything still. I came in at number six. There'll so be a replay. The... Don't worry. There'll be a replay. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it on the re-up, obviously. But I wasn't sure. There was just one thing I wanted to mention because this is just something I always preach about. The mm. system of racism, white supremacy, and that's what they do is control the narrative. Yeah, you there, bro? It's being know. discussed, but in particular, for example, the black leaders of past, they want to control the way we talk about them. That the example yeah. I'll use is that Martin, for example, we always hear that I have a dream speech, but we never hear the dream turned into the nightmare speech. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. They never, you know, the soot like Muhammad Ali, we always hear I'm the greatest, but you have to go onto YouTube and be in certain groups to see all the shit he said politically orientated on the race. Mm -hmm. So they like to, they have to control the narrative on, on the way we think and look at things. So they are always suggesting how to think about things. And some of the rules, some of the rules that you said are, are an aspect of that. Mm -hmm. But I think that's one of the main things they do, like control the way to look at shit as yeah. opposed to just letting you think freely about something. Because if they don't talk about it, then you think freely about it. So no, exactly. let's not do that. Let's talk about it, but let's talk about it in a way that suits us. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's very, yeah, yeah. very important. Yeah, very important, King. And when you watch the replay, just let me know, hit me up and see if um, you feel I, I missed it because I do talk about how they control the narrative from the start where they, they control our history. They, they control what we um, know about our history and what we don't know because that, right. that will affect the narrative as well. Right. Like it's very important for them to control the history and let us make sure that they hide certain things with regards to our history. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 a, that's, that's the better example than the exact same point I'm making. It's exactly that, bro. Just... Literally on everything, but if you just say history, then that covers everything. Yeah, control yeah. the way we think about shit in it, long and yeah. short of it. That's key to it all. Because again, if they don't, then we're gonna start thinking freely about these things. That can't happen. So can't think happen. about it. That can't happen. So think about it in this context. Think about it in that context. You know, can say that when again. Can you when you out? say Canada days a black person, they, they automatically attach that to black people. Oh, sorry. Say that again. Last point. Yeah. When, when we, when, when you, last point, when you hear the term cannibalism, even most black people attach that to black people and Africans and, you know, the myths that they've said about them. When you show, you've done a, 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 a lecture on it and the amount of information out there now about the amount of cannibalistic behaviors them man there have been dealing with. Exactly. Like, it, it's mad. So this That's is projection. Yeah, yeah. It's projection. Exactly. It's facts. But yet, to this day, if you say the term cannibalism, people are going to attach that to a black person, to an African, to some tribal man in the bush, not this civilized white man, innit? Exactly. This is how sick controlling the narrative is, bro. They, yeah. You can completely ignore facts for the shit they've said. Yeah. So, yeah. Big up, That's King. My bro, love. Love. Yeah. The King was so right, man. The way they... Um the way they project that cannibalism thing onto us. 
but it goes back to what I was saying with regards to um, not only projection, but um, us being the face of disease and that sort of stuff. We, we're the face of all of that cannibalism stuff. Going back to Africa, they, they tried to associate us with cannibalism when it's really them. It was really them. And I did that in my, I covered that in my pod class. So let me just quickly go back to my slides. All right. So let me finish up, family. Thank you for everyone staying right to the end. So big up the people that have booked onto the Wellness Weekender. We do have um, some discounts and you can put down a £150 deposit. So contact Sister Barbara. She'll let you know how to put down a deposit. Uh, she'll put her details in the chat. So you guys get onto this. Remember, if Black Love, breaking up Black Love is their number one priority, then we need to do things where we're together, loving each other, appreciating each other. This should be our number one priority. Yeah. And we've got an event in Leeds coming up, family. So big up the people that have stayed right to the end. If you use this link, bit.ly forward slash Leeds lecture, um, it takes you to the event right where we're doing the event in Leeds. Um, I'm the main speaker, but there's going to be other speakers as well. Sahu Teo Shen and some other speakers are going to be there. And this is the promo code. So big up the people that have stayed right to the end. If you're anywhere near Leeds, if you live in Leeds or you're near Leeds or you've got family around there, give them this promo code and they get the tickets for half price. Yeah. So BLK50. They go to that link. They click on tickets. Then they'll see a link saying enter promo code. They enter the promo code, put in this promo code. They get the tickets for half price, which is literally next to nothing. And then we'll see them down at Leeds West Indian Center. Yeah. So big up BLK. Uh, big up the people that have booked. But if you haven't booked, use this promo code BLK50. And I want to see you guys in Leeds. Very powerful lecture. This is where we're going to be talking about, you know, the narrative. Um, Henry was just talking about the narrative where um, we need to control the narrative and the narrative with regards to our health is we're more likely to. So I'm going to be breaking that down. They always tell us that we're more likely to suffer from this, that and the other. I'm going to be breaking that down at this lecture. Very powerful lecture family coming up. And big up my Birmingham family. We're going to be in Birmingham in October, Black History Month. We're going to be in Birmingham family. So again, if you go to this link, bit.ly forward slash Black Music 2022, this is going to be a very big event. It's at the Legacy Center of Excellence, which is a black owned venue in Birmingham. Don't want to miss this. The Hidden Sites of Black Music It's going to be Robin Walker is going to be the main speaker. You've got Andrew Mohammed and myself, Leon Marshall. We're all going to be down there. Loads of people down there. DJs down there. Big up Asa Jacks. It's going to be vibes upon vibes upon vibes and love upon love upon love. I want to see everyone down there. I don't care where you're from. Leeds, Manchester, Coventry, London. I want to see you at this event. Last time we did um, an event at Legacy Center last year, over 500 people were in the venue. So I want to see more this year. Yeah. And again, use this promo code and you can get the tickets for half price. So there's no excuse. VIP members, by the way, you know you get these events for free. So VIP members, you get this event for free. If you're a VIP member of the Hidden Sites Academy, just come true. If you're in Leeds, let us know. Go to the um, hiddensitesacademy.com. Make sure you're on the VIP guest list. And same with this event as well. Make sure you're on the VIP guest list. And we will be starting the, the white supremacy course very soon. VIP members, I'm going to let you know about that. If you want to become a VIP member, just go to the hidden science academy.com forward slash register and register. Very affordable for the family. It's under £10 to register. And then you'll become a VIP member. You get access to all of our physical events for free and discounts on our weekenders. Yeah. And access to all of our online courses as well. So a lot of value that we're giving you guys. Thank you for everyone that, who stayed right to the end. And I do have a pod class as well. I do these on the first of each and every month. And just to mention, family, I'm going to be in Birmingham on the 1st of October at an event. So I'm going to be doing my pod class, which I usually do on the 1st. I'm going to be doing the October one on the 2nd, just so you know, family. I'm going to be doing my pod class, which I usually do on the 1st of each month. But because I'm going to be at an event on the 1st in Birmingham, I'll do the next pod class on the 2nd. And for those of you who are on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram. My tag is at the scientist online. Large up everyone who stayed right to the end. Big up all the family. I'm hope hopefully people wrote the, the 10 rules down, but don't worry, there's gonna be a, a replay so everyone can go through the replay and go through it very slowly. Very powerful information. Share this with your friends, share this with your family members, share this with people who, you know, 
say things like there's no such thing as racism and that sort of stuff share it with them and, and ask them what do they think yeah they got the people showing love in the chat i see you but we're now going to sign out family so